Hi guys and welcome to today's video on congruent triangles, specifically at a year 8 level, but wow, these videos are going to start moving on. My name's Darren and I am at Maths Guru. Thank you very much for joining me. These videos are for you and hopefully help you get good at maths. English there was not my strong point. Now, if you can do me the massive honor over in the corner at some point soon, will be an arrow pointing to a little doohickey that you can click to subscribe. Subscribing is great and it lets me actually know that you are watching. So click and don't forget to turn on notifications so you can find out when I upload new videos, which I am doing all of the time. Now, if you've been watching along, my previous video was actually on congruent shapes. We dealt with the idea of congruence. Now, what is congruence? Well, it's one of those things, if you write it in your summary book, you are going to get right every single time. Alternatively, rote learn it. Most of maths, if you can just commit it to memory, is stuff that we generally, as maths teachers, regurgitate all of the time. So congruence is where shapes are exactly the same size. And by that, I mean the side lengths are the same, and the angles are the same length as well. Yay! But we try and trick you in mathematics by flipping, as in reflecting shapes, or we twist them around. And yes, oh, unfortunately, it throws people because you go, well, it's not exactly the same. It doesn't have to be the same orientation, the same rotation, so long as the sides and the lengths are the same. Now, we're moving on today because congruent triangles are freaking awesome. We use them all the way through year eight, year nine, and year 10. Now, we're going to dip our toe in the water with this one here. And by the end of this particular video, you're going to need to know what SSS, SIS, AAS, and RHS are and how to apply them to individual questions. Now, as it turns out, we've looked previously at congruence, and as I say, there was an example of two shapes that were congruent. Now, the one thing we needed to highlight from the previous video was the ordering of the letters and how we define what congruence is. So let's just say congruence is given by that little sign there, so it's one extra line on an equal sign. And if I wanted to say that these two triangles were congruent, then I would say triangle A, B, C, is equal to triangle. Now, what would we do there? D, E, F? Well, sadly not. Generally speaking, the order we do a triangle or the order we put the letters in for any shapes doesn't have a huge significance. As long as we start one and either go uh, anticlockwise or clockwise, or clockwise and anticlockwise, whichever way my camera was there. But when we have congruence, we have to actually match the letters. So because I started with letter A here, I have to start with letter F there. So we had an F. Because I then went to B, I'd have to go to D. And then obviously, by process of elimination, we have there the letter E. And so putting those three lines together, that would tell me that those two uh, triangles were congruent. Now, again, as I said in my previous video, Mm, while those three angles are the same, it doesn't necessarily mean the side lengths are the same. And sadly, maybe this diagram isn't the best, but we would assume that the side lengths were the same by putting these little marks on. And then I would know that these triangles are in fact congruent. So going back to what you did previously in previous year levels, year seven and year eight, and probably year six and five, we talk about triangles in terms of generally two particular things. That is the length of their sides or the number of sides and the number of angles, or the size of their angles. So let me think, side begins with S, and angle begins with A. And suddenly, going back to the stuff that we said at the start, where you had to know about S, SS, SAS, which is Secret Service in uh, the United Kingdom, AAS, or RHS. Now, RHS we'll come back to in a moment, but there we go. So, when we are looking at triangles, and we are trying to talk about congruence, we can actually use four rules, or we can basically turn around and say, well, look, looking at these triangles, we can apply SSS or whatever else. So I'm going to deal with them one at a time. And the first one, which is the easiest one, is SSS. Now, bearing in mind, SSS stands for side. What we're really saying there is that the triangles are congruent because side, side, and side, i.e., sides are all the same length. So if we look at this cool example here, extracted from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, thank you, Cambridge, we can see that those little marks, the ones I talked about a moment ago, are on the sides of the triangle. Likewise, they're, they're on that second triangle as well. And because the sides on triangle number one and triangle number two are the same, and then we can say these are congruent. Now, questions will turn around and say, give reasons. Now, you can't just turn around and say, well, because it is like, in it, bro? Or, well, because like, uh, duh, are you thick? It just looks that way. Uh, no, 
Probably not. What you have to do is you put down those letters that apply to the rule. In this situation, I would say the triangles are congruent because of side, side, side rule. Now, later on, when you get to the year nine content, the year 10 content, you'll have to write similarity statements. Now that, remember, was covered in a previous video. And so similarity statements don't necessarily apply in this particular, we're just dipping our toe in the water. So that was the easy one, side, side, side. What about this one, SAS, Secret Service of the United Kingdom. Now at the start of this video, I said that when we name triangles, we have to make sure that we use the letters in either a clockwise or an anti-clockwise order, and for congruence, we have to match them up. So breaking down this idea of SAS, would you be happy that it is side, angle, side? Okay, so we're looking for a side, an angle, and a side to be the same. But the important thing here is the order of the letters actually matters for that rule. Now, as I say here, well, why couldn't we write it as A, why couldn't I write it as ASS? -S? Well, other than that says ass, <laughs> yes? Well, because the order of this says that for the rule to be true, for this to be able to define congruence, we have to have a side, an angle, and a side, as in that angle must be in the middle of the two sides of that triangle. Now, another word we use for that to describe is actually called the included angle. So when an angle falls between two sides, we call it the included angle. And scrolling up, what do we see here? Well, here is a beautiful example of an SAS set of congruence for two triangles. What do we notice? Well, here is the first side. Here is my second side, and what do you notice? That angle is between the two of them. That angle is touching both of those sides. It is included. And our second triangle, we've got that one mark again, and that two marks. Now, whenever we have a diagram like that, that one little line stands for the same length in both triangles. And likewise here, because that angle is included, and are we sure it's the same size angle? Well, yes, they've used a colored in dot here and a colored in dot here. So I now know I've got a side, I've got an included angle, and I've got a side. I is happy as Larry. So there we go. I would be able to say that. The reason they are congruent is because of the SAS rule. Now we get to AAS, ass again. God, the mathematics is so rude. The order of the letters here doesn't matter one little jot. Only SAS is important. Yes, look at this one here. So what does AAS mean? angle, angle, side. So when we have triangles that share two equal angles or two common angles and one equal side, it is going to be congruent. It can't be drawn any other way. So looking at our example here, we have an angle and we have an angle and a side. It's not an included. Bear in mind we don't have two sides anyway. It can't be included. But we have colored in dot, open dot, and single mark. We have colored in dot, uh, open dot and single mark. And so again, if I had that example in an exam, I would go or in a test or in a exercise, I'd be going like, yeah, day is congruent, bro, because A, A, S. Now the final rule here is the R, H, S. And it fascinates me because we put this into the year eight course and yet you guys, I don't think have actually met something called the hypotenuse yet. Now, when I did this with my maths group yesterday, yes, some of them turned around and went, I know what hypotenuse is. And that's because they've done it sort of an extension task in year six. But let's look at what the letters mean first. So R stands for right angle. We know what a right angle, we've seen those. H stands for this word I've just said there, hypotenuse, and S stands for side. So looking at how the rest of those rules work, for the triangles to be congruent, they have to both share a right angle, both share a hypotenuse, or have the same length of a hypotenuse, and both have one other side that are the same. So what is this hypotenuse we speak of? When we get to year nine maths, we're gonna start something called trigonometry, which is awesome. And trigonometry tells us that triangles actually have sides that have names, not Bob, Alice, Fred, whatever else, but one of those sides is actually the hypotenuse. And for any right angle triangle, and this is true of only right angle triangles, the longest side is called the hypotenuse. Now, how do you know which one is the longest side? Well, as I say here, if I was to draw my triangle, and there is my right angle, I always think of right angles as the arrowhead pointing to something important. 
And the thing of a right angle triangle is it points to my hypotenuse. Now, the great thing is you don't necessarily have to know how to spell hypotenuse, although it's a good idea if you do. Um, I always write hype, H-Y-P, because we use some hype of maths. So that hypotenuse, basically that longest side of a triangle, is what we're checking for in the RHS rule. So let's have a look at congruence and let's check these two triangles. Do they actually apply or are they RHS? So let's just check one more time. R, right angle. Do they share a right angle? I should Coco. H, do they have the same hypotenuse length? Well, there's my arrow pointing to my hypotenuse, which is a single mark. There is my arrow pointing to my hypotenuse, which is a single mark. They are the same. And remember, it says then S, one other side that is the same. And it just so happens there's a double line. And there's a double line that says they are the same. So whoop, whoop again. Oh, this stuff is awesome. So don't forget the congruence sign that I talked about earlier. And let's just have a look at a couple of examples which have been extracted from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series. Thank you so much, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your books. They are freaking awesome. So the question says, which of the tests, SSS, SAS, AAS, or IHS, would you choose to test the congruence of these pairs of triangles? So again, it's not looking for similarity statements or congruence statements. It's not looking for any of that. It's looking for you to just say which they are. Well, first things first, how many angles has it got? How many sides has it got? Well, it's got one side and two angles. Well, I don't know about you, but that pretty much says the rule I'm going to use because there's only one rule. Remember, SSS is three sides. SAS is two sides and one angle. AAS is two angles and one side. And RHS, well, it doesn't have a right angle, so it can't be that one. We don't have three sides. We don't have two sides. It has to be AAS. And in this particular exercise, that's what you have to do. Looking at the second one, once again, let's see SSS, SAS, AAS, or RHS. Do we have three sides given? No, although we could work them out. That's a piece of maths coming later on in year nine. Side, side, and an angle. Well, yes, interestingly, we have two sides and an angle that are the same. So interestingly here, I reckon you could also put SAS. AAS, two angles and a side, no. The one they're probably looking for, and the one that's probably most relevant, is RHS. Why? Well, because they both have a right angle, they both share a hypotenuse, and there is one other side that is the same length. I personally would mark SAS correct as well. Right, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm just going to do is jump on a little bit more and say about supporting statements. Now, looking at the above example, and I've just replicated it a little bit below before, to be able to then go on and talk about, you know, writing supporting statements to prove congruence. If you remember from our previous video, we need to talk about vertices and side lengths and angles and stuff. And we can't do it in these two examples. Do you know why? Because we don't have letters on our triangle. So if I said that was A, B, C, this would then be D, E, and F. Now putting that on, I could start to write statements to say, well, okay, we now know that that is congruent, that triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, F. We could put down that we know that it is due to angle, angle, side, and then say our supporting statements are, well, angle A is equal to or congruent with angle D, angle B is congruent with angle uh, e and side length BC is congruent with EF and so probably I'd put here angle, angle, side and that's coming up in the year nine work. Okay, so at the moment we can't write those statements because we don't have letters on the vertices of those triangles but it's coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been more fun than I could possibly imagine having on a Saturday morning. Yes, it's Saturday morning and I'm recording this for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, can you do me two favours? Shout out to some of your friends and get them to subscribe. And if you haven't already done so, can you subscribe? Yes, in a moment. Over there is a doohickey, a circle that allows you to subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated if you could. Otherwise, a video is loading below it. And if you can't be bothered with doing any of that, well, hopefully we'll see you back for another video. I'm done. Maths Guru, signing out. Take care. Bye-bye.